I'm going to read from the book of Psalm. Psalm 122, verses 1. And it says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad? I am glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm so glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Brethren, I want you to use this opportunity to thank the Lord for bringing you into his presence. I want you to exalt the name of the Lord. I am glad to be in his presence. Are you glad to be in his presence too? Let's just give him all the glory. Let's worship him. Let's adore him. Let's give him all the praise for the gift of life. For our salvation, we cannot just but thank him. It is all about Jesus. Let's just worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you all the glory. We worship you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you because you are good. Thank you because you are amazing, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I want you to tell the Lord that as you are here before him this evening, that the Lord will touch you. That as he will teach us once again, that you will take what belongs to you and you will run with it. Let's ask the Lord for grace. Grace. The Lord, as we are here before you, the grace to receive what you are going to teach us today, you will give unto me. As many that will be coming, let's just ask the Lord to bring them here to be part of the blessing of this evening. And for those who will be joining us online too, let's ask the Lord that they will join and they will be blessed as well. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us commit every of the program that we have this evening, the praise worship time and the time to study the word into the hands of the Lord. Let's ask that the Holy Spirit, which is the teacher himself, will teach us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's ask the Lord to prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts so that we will receive of that which he has for us today. Even in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to begin to play the blood of Jesus over the sanctuary. Play the blood of Jesus upon yourself. Let's commit the teacher into the hands of the Lord. That the Holy Spirit will just speak through him. That he will not uh, speak of himself, but that the Holy Spirit will give him utterance as we dig into the word of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for divine ocean, Lord. Thank you for the utterance, Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you will help us again tonight. Help us, Holy Spirit. Let your presence be here again. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And so, Father, we thank you. For the gifts of life thank you for bringing us into your presence as we gather before you we ask that lord you will be here with us and lord you will teach us afresh again in jesus name so we hand over this meeting to you and we say let this meeting be graced with your presence in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord Just go ahead and say something good to him this evening. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praises. He alone is worthy to be praised. From generation to generation, he remains the same. Lord, we've come before your presence to worship you. You are the Lord. Let 
Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Oh, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Oh, we give you love, Lord. We give you glory.
Worship him tonight. Let's appreciate the King of Glory. Let's magnify the Rock of Ages, the Mighty One of Israel, the Everlasting Father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the One who was, who is, and who is to come, the Everlasting God, the Bread of Life. Go ahead and bless His holy name tonight. Worship him. Worship him. Honor him. Lift him high, for there is no one like him. Bless his holy name. Oh, bless his holy name tonight. Exalt him. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. We lift you high. We magnify you. You are God all by yourself. 
You don't need any man to make you God. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Honor him. Appreciate him. Father, we thank you. King of glory, we honor you. Almighty God, we lift you high. You are worthy to be praised, worthy to be exalted, worthy to be magnified. You are the very best. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Oh, blessed be your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Father in heaven, we want to thank you again for your love and faithfulness unto us. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace upon our lives. Thank you because you are the one that has preserved us even till this moment. Lord, we give you all the praise and we ask that even tonight we are in your presence. God of heaven, please teach us tonight. Show us things tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Glorify yourself. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Before you sit down, I will ask that you occupy this row and this row and move to the front. Move to the front quickly so that when we want to pass the microphone, it will be very easy for us to do so. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Comment ça va? Okay. Oui, okay, good, good. Somebody said that uh, in French, all you need to just know is the oui, oui. And every other thing will fall in place. But my French teacher is looking at me if I'm doing very well. But uh, I think she's proud of her students. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight, by the grace of God, we are going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Last week, we looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I would like to find out from us what we learned from Second Corinthians chapter 10. What did you learn? What did you learn? Second Corinthians 10. You didn't learn anything? All right. We need one usher on this side, one on this side, so that the microphone can move very fast. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my takeaway from last week was two major things. All right. Uh, the first one was how Paul, who Paul, who in his letters he appeared to be bold to them, and when they when he came, he was much calmer, and they took it for they misrepresented him and said, oh, he was timid, and he was trying to explain that his authority was not in how powerful he appeared, but in what he said. And the second thing I, I took away was strongholds. Um, Paul, going back from that first point, said the power of God that works in him is powerful enough to dismiss strongholds, and we mentioned that strongholds were. They start primarily in the mind, and then they build from there. But the power of God is powerful enough to destroy every stronghold. All right. Thank you very much. Very good student. Who wants to show that he was a... Okay, Mr. Oluchi again. I think I was doing you from last week. I was in class. So. You were in class. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, um, I know we also talked about how we take feedback, you know. Um, when... We, when we are, I don't want to use the word scolded, or when we get feedback from our leaders, how do we hold their hands up? How do we take feedback? Do we bear it grudgingly or do we accept it? And do we, uh, we won't take away from there was that whatever we do, let's do it as unto the Lord, not unto the pastor, not unto any man. So irrespective of what people say or do to you from time to time in the course of service, just say that you're doing it unto God and move on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
and also that the seat of strongholds is in the mind okay. that I took. Okay, and take the message and leave the messenger. Okay. Praise the Lord. We also yeah. talked about the fact that I should, there is no need for contention. We are all running our race individually, so there is no need to start measuring against somebody else. The other part is, if you've got it, flaunt it. Um, if you have a track record, you can speak about your track record. Um, as far as you post in the Lord, there is no problem about it. And don't be hesitant to speak about it. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the name of our Lord. Thank you for those three people that were in class. Oh, Dr. Voke was also in class. All right. Let's Praise see. God. I know Dr. Ovure was not in class. He was in class. Okay. No, no, but I, you know why I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right. Now, I was just going to add that we talked about commendations as well, that, it's that what our motives are for commending people is very important. I want to be very mindful of you know, what it is and that on both sides, both the commender and the commending. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 11 today. Uh, we'll read from New King James Version. And I would like somebody to read for me the first four verses. First four verses. Then we will discuss. Put that, those points we want to look at tonight, uh, if you have them. Who is going to read? He gave you the mic. Ah. You just went to her and gave her the mic. Okay. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 11, 1 to 4. Okay. Uh, New King James Version. Okay. Oh, that you would bear with me a little fully, and indeed you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have been betrothed, I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest somehow, as a serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so I'm good. Uh, let's, why did Paul, let's start by asking ourselves some questions. Now, this Bible study uh, is not a preaching class. It's a Bible study class. And when you study, you ask questions. Why did Paul ask the question he asked? That they should, he asked them and he said, bear with me a little fully. What was he trying to say? Or let me make it easy. The first four verses, what are we trying to get? What, what was he trying to say? First four verses. Verses 1 to 4. What was Paul trying to say? Or what do you understand? Verses 1 to 4. Anybody? All right. Give him the microphone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I believe that the, the statement he spoke when he said, bear with me a little folly, and then he proceeds to explain what he was trying to say was, I think he was trying to say, indulge me. Um, I know maybe what I'm saying might seem obvious to a few of you, but I believe this is very pertinent. Someone here needs to hear this. And the point is that I, I think some of you, even though I have spent time trying to tell you about Jesus Christ, some of you may appear strong, but if something else should come, I think you, you might waver. So I think he was trying to explain a fear that was not quite obvious to some people. Okay, bear with me a little folly, even though what I'm trying to say might look foolish to you, but it is very important. Those things I hold dear may look to you as if it doesn't make sense, but it is very important. 
Why do you think he began with that statement? Okay, before now we talked about his letters. So I don't want to ask about the impact of his letters and all those things. But why do you think Paul started with that? Was there any reason why he started with that? Are you raising your hand? Okay. Let me know if you are raising your hand. Why did this? All right. Microphone here. Uh, I, I think it's because from what we have we read in the in chapter 10, mm -hmm. um, his call was being questioned and some people were proving that they knew better, that they were more superior in terms of their spirituality. So, um, and we spoke last um, two, uh, Thursday the, in chapter 10 about how humble um, Paul is, that he concedes to other people, even though he knows that his position is stronger. But he's very, very humble the way he presents the gospel. So I think it's just part of his character to say, excuse me, <laughs> you know, I may sound foolish, but this is very strong. He presents very hard gospel in a very, very humble way. What he's teaching them is very hard, but he's trying to make it soft in order to present it. And they had already said before that his letters are stronger than when he appears in person. So this just proves also that truly when he appears in person, he's more humble than his letters. That's what I get from him. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Let's jump to the next verse. But I fear. I fear that somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by craftiness, so the minds may be so so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, and I was I asked a question, is it possible to preach another Jesus? Okay, so those are the questions we want to answer. Number one, is it possible to preach another Jesus? Number two, why was Paul afraid? Because if you look down, he talked about oh, let's not jump too much. But why was he afraid? I see three hands here, one year, two year. Okay, beautiful. Let's praise, start on this side. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was just going to comment on at that aspect before reading verse three because I think if we look at our time now, it will come uh, reference it to what uh, Paul is saying here. He said, just like the serpent deceived uh, Eve, because now we we'll see that uh, a lot of heresy, and I can relate it to that time as well, because heresy were being preached, so another Jesus will be heresy. And that is what is happening in our days, that we listen to all manners of teaching without even filtering what we are hearing. So that is what is concerning. Yes, you want to be faithful, you go to church, but everything they come out to preach to you. And people have itchy here. They go about from churches to church, uh, churches listening to things without filtering what is right or, no, or wrong. Praise the Lord. Okay, Paul, remember that this, this is a church that Paul started. He was really concerned about these people. I haven't led them. And he was afraid that some other doctrine, because it all comes from the mind, these people may be deceived or will be deceived and they will deviate from the path of truth and go in the wrong direction. And he was worried and concerned for them. As a matter of fact, that is how a pastor should watch out. He should be concerned for his people. I won't say worried per se, but he should be concerned if, his, if the, the sheep of God, because I, I don't like saying his people because the people don't belong to him. The people belong to God. But the people is overseeing. You should be concerned about their faith that they are not deviating. And that was the kind of concern Paul had. He was, he had the concern that look, what is happening? These people will leave what they have been taught and head in the wrong direction. And because it was the kind of things that were taught, and he was giving an example, look, as Satan deceived Eve, and that also started from the mind. Certain things, the devil presented it as if they were really true. 
And these people will believe these things and turn away from God. And so he was concerned because he wanted them to remain in Christ, to stay on the path of truth. But another set of people, another gospel. And truly that's what is happening today. And it is big time. I'm not even sure. I think what is happening now is more than what happened in Corinth. In the, in, in Corinth. Because the kind of things we see now, I don't think it happened in that time. Maybe. I'm not sure. I sent uh, a clip to, I think, few people here. I think the Kimbola and Pastor Mrs. I don't know how many people saw the clip. I don't even know. Because sometimes I sit down and I say, how can these people, is it that they don't have sense? Is it what has gone over them? A pastor is on the altar and then people will come, women basically. They come to dance and as they are dancing, he comes with something. Oh, who saw it? He sprays them by the neck and then they start manifesting. They dance and they, oh, the spirit have taken over them. The kind of spirit is the evil spirit. And they were dancing. He would just go pick one. They come and, and people gathered. And I'm wondering, what is wrong with these people? If they are not doing that, somebody is standing here and throwing something and is part of anointing. And jumping on people's chest. And people believe. And then we go from one church to the other. We just, because these days, the things we, it's very easy to tune from one channel to the other. To move from one church to the other on social media. Because everybody's on social media now. In fact, as a matter of fact, you just sit down, your phone will just pop up. Especially if you have visited or registered there once. Tell you they are online. And you can't filter what is right from what is wrong because you yourself, you don't study. And so we get the wrong package. And when you build on the wrong package, you grow on the wrong package, the life of the person will be affected by the wrong package and he lives on the wrong package and it will impact his life negatively. That's why we must be careful what we hear. I saw this a lot of things I would like to share here, but hopefully we'll have time. Maybe I will just say it as we go along so I don't, um, we, we, we don't forget. These days, it is more about how you even speak the English. It's more about the presentation than the power, than the presence of God. But we'll see that. We'll see what, we'll look at, we'll look at that as we proceed. So we must therefore be careful, very, very careful what we hear. All right. Any other comment? I saw some hands before. Yeah. You can just speak now. Don't wait for me. Just. All right. I see hands there. Yep. One year, then there. Okay. Go ahead, Pastor Rosemary. Praise the Lord. And also, it explains that the choice or the decision is ours, right? Um, and also, looking at it from the um, last chapter that we did before, where it talked about in Second Corinthians ten four to six, if the weapon of our warfare are not for the weapon of our warfare are not for the flesh, but are divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy the arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. We are the ones who make the choice if to follow the false prophet or to even click and listen to it and rather than God, rather than the word of God. So the more of the word of God we put in us, that's the spiritual weapon we have to fight what the false prophet has to say. Praise the Lord. Okay, Pastor Blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I was just wondering, I think you asked the question, why would Paul say what he said? Mm. And I was thinking that Paul knew his congregation very well. And perhaps he observed that they were not grounded well, not rooted in the word. And that is why he's afraid. And then the other thing is that he knows that they are flesh. They have a heart for God. He said they were dedicated. They truly have a heart for God, but are they rooted? Are they grounded? And I think that was what Paul is trying to do. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments? Let's move on. Now, when we come for Bible study like this, I usually say that 
Paul and the apostles are no more. But the scripture has been written for us as examples. So that the mistake the people in Corinth made, we will make the same mistake. Praise the name of the Lord. So we try to bring it home and then apply it. So one of the applications is that be careful what you do what? Not even what you hear. Where you go to. Be careful where you go to. Be careful what you hear. And be careful what you listen to. Because there are two things. You may hear, you may not listen. But you may hear and listen. So be careful what you hear. Be careful where you visit. Be careful also who you follow. Because sometimes it is not us directly. It is the people that are in our circle of influence, or how will I call it, uh, our friends, that we say, have you heard? It's happening here. And some of us, don't, we don't know left from right. It's happening here. We join the car. We join the boat. It's happening here. We join the bus. It's happening here. We go. So be careful what you hear. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. Um, now, let's look at the other verses. Let's go, let's go. Starting from verse um, 5, right? Or 6? 5, okay, go ahead. Same, same reader. Since you have decided to be our... Uh, oh, was somebody else willing to read Okay. For I consider that I'm not at two where is it? five to uh, to, ten. to ten. For I consider that I'm not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles. Even though I'm untrained in speech, yet I'm not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. Did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted? Because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge. I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. And when I was present with you and in need, I was a burden to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied. And in everything, I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so I will keep myself. 10. As the truth of Christ is in me, no one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of Akaria. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. A couple of things there. Eminent apostles, or uh, people who say they are superior apostles. What, what was Paul trying to say there? Remember, there is, there is this impression that, look, this guy does not know how to speak. But Paul was saying to them, look, I may not know how to speak. That is not the issue. But when it comes to the knowledge, I have it. And today, we have in our environment. What word? I'm looking for the right word. Huh? Motivational speakers. Uh -huh. We have them today in the church. And some of them are pastors. So they come and they speak and they yeah, people are jumping. Hey, fly on, move on. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, the speech, the excitement, the everything, but maybe no substance. And Paul is saying, look, I may not have all of those things they used to make noise. But one thing I know I have is I have the knowledge. And he was saying to them, is it that I did something bad? So I, when I look at this scripture, it was more like the other apostles who call themselves the eminent apostles. It's like they put a weight on these people. Because Paul was saying, I didn't collect anything from you. So it's possible that those other people laid burden on them. They were teaching them the wrong thing. They were still collecting things from them or Feeding on them, if I will use that word. 
Because he was saying to them, I never, I didn't do any of these things. His service was selfless. His service was truthful. He was humble. But yeah, the other set of people who looked like they were feeding on the people and yet they were giving them the wrong information. Let's go ahead and discuss. What can we get from there? Any contribution? Or anybody who wants to contribute? Okay. Nobody? All right. So for each passage, you, each of these areas we, we have covered, those who have contributed, especially the person who read, gets so far a $25 gift card of, uh, what is that? It's not in what is now. What is that expensive shop they go to buy coffee? I think it's Starbucks. All right. You, you can take juice from there. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be coffee. All right. No, I can change it. I can swap it. All right. Okay, go, go ahead first. Praise the Lord. So, the, the thing about the current church, and we can liken it today, is the fact that people focus on the things they see rather than their power. Okay? And when they say pick what they see, it's if an old man walks in here looking a bit tattered and unkept, there's a possibility that people... But from the mindset, everything starts from the mind. People may already berate or underrate the individual rather than have a perspective to be meek in mind, to be able to hear and be eager to see or to say, look, I'm going to get something out of the message that will ever come from this person. Because God has used the donkey to speak. So it does not, the appearance does not matter. But in the case of Paul, I believe there were a bit of a conflict also between the ministry of Paul and the ministry of Peter himself, of Peter also. One was with Jesus, one was not seen with Jesus, all that were going on. But in today's world, are we running after the big names? Are we running after those places that are heavily filled up? Are we running after those places where we hear there are miracle signs and wonders? If we're running after miracle signs and wonders, there is a possibility that we might be like the current church. But also, taking it from a worker in church, we should not feel inferior to anybody. I don't even think Apostle Paul needed to write some of these things because he had a track record that everybody can see. And everybody will not be eloquent because Moses was used for great works and Moses was not eloquent. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. One person there. These people on this side are not talking. So let's focus on the people on this side. We only have one class today. Or one, 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 one quarter. One, we're supposed to be two, but one. Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I just want to contribute that as children of God, in all the things that we have learned today, there is need for us to know God on one on one level. To understand what he's saying to us and know what the truth is saying about a particular thing. You know, during the current time, there was no social media. Even though if some pastors are doing something wrong, you might not even know. Your own is whatever they say to you on the pulpit is what you like. Some people will say, do as I say, not as I, uh, die, as I do. There was a movie then that we acted is titled Fall of a Thousand. So what is happening in our current day as children of God? Because of, we have access to the life of everybody now. What they do on social media, even if you don't want to watch, you, somebody has seen it and is telling you and all those kind of things. So it is important for us, like the fear that Brother Paul was nothing, is 
will these people be able to withstand this heat? So if as a child of God, if you actually know the truth, not what your pastor is saying alone, you have a personal relationship with God, then whatever you hear, the hear say or whatever they do, will not, uh, will not water what you already know because you are fair. You know your stand. You know the truth of God about giving, about everything. So you will not waver, irrespective of what you listen to or what you hear. There yet, we still have to be careful what we listen to. But it's very, very important that we have a personal relationship with God and know his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So look at, just picture the situation. One church, or one, let me use, one set of people. But one original and probably several fake. And the fake ones are the ones trying to exert influence to make the other one look not real. That was what, that was, what was happening here. That's what is happening today. And that's why I ask the question if people can preach another Jesus. Because what has happened now is people use the name of God to do all manner of things. Because when people hear Jesus, they just go and believe that it is Jesus. So they use that name to commit a lot of things that are just wrong. And people don't filter what they hear. And it's so bad. Some years ago, I was trying to convince, I mean, I was talking to somebody. And I said to, to her, then it used to be one church like that. <laughs> the person is, I don't want to call the name, but the person is late now. We give you water. You go and pray on the water. Or you do some funny things. And when I was, I was trying to say, look, this part is wrong. Ah, the Jesus you are calling your church is the same Jesus here. So there was nothing anybody could say that would change the part of that person. Why? Because they have so convinced the person that Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. No matter how they use the method they used to get to him. In the first place, they were not getting to him anyway. They were just getting their pocket filled up. And that's another thing we need to be careful today. There are many people that are not feeding the people of God, but they are feeding on the people of God. There are two different things. Many pastors are supposed to feed the people with the word of God, but they don't feed the people, they feed on the people. So you can imagine like... Uh, that clip I saw, and there are many of them. There are many of those clips. I, sometimes uh, when I see some of them, people say that to me, I just, I just laugh. Like the Kimbola, his response was madness. <laughs> uh, honestly, it was complete madness. And you will notice that the people who go through this process, they bring so much money to give to the pastor. Because they believe that the pastor has done something great for them. So instead of feeding the people with the truth, they feed on them and deceive them. And I pray that God will help us and help this generation in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. These days it's even easy. When they finish, they tell you to donate. You don't need to write check. All you need to do is just uh, do the interact or do your credit, do your transfer and they will receive the, the money. And some people are growing big and big and big by the day. And I wonder where will they end up? At the end of it all, when you collect all these things, where will you end up? I also ask myself the question, if these people repent tomorrow, for example, you have deceived people for the last 20 years. You now repent today 
and the person dies tomorrow, what will happen? Meanwhile, the people they deceived, <laughs> they've not known the truth. They are still where they are. And they are going the wrong direction. So be careful. Because some things some people say and do is just for them to fill their pockets. It's not for the, it's not for Jesus Christ. It's for their personal gain. Paul had nothing. Up. Paul was not personal about himself. It wasn't about Paul. It was about Jesus Christ. Everything Paul did, his service, everything about him was about Jesus Christ. He wasn't trying to promote himself. He wasn't trying to do any, to do any of those things. Just like we have today. So let's talk about the boasting. Because I just made a comment. that Paul wasn't trying to promote himself. But at some point, Paul also started bringing up his credentials. Yes. Chini. Give him a microphone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I'm sorry, sir, but I, I, have to tell, I, I would like to take us back mm. to the real people and the fake people. Mm. Nowadays, there are more people proclaiming Jesus than ever before in the history of the world, which is in line with the prophecy of God, that in the last days, you'll pour his spirit out. So, beyond people who do theatrical acts of people falling down, how do we know the real people from the fake people? How do we know people who... How do we... Because there, there's nothing wrong with them. You cannot... There's nothing wrong with them. They, they come... When you take their words and you go back to the scripture, there are truths there. Some of them, they match. Maybe, there, maybe there's one, I would say, doctrinal difference between what you have known and what they are doing. Does that mean they are fake? Or does that mean they are real? How do you know? It's not about doctrine, but before I answer that question, who wants to, who wants to add? It's not about... Doctrine is there, but it's not the, it's not the major thing. Okay. I see many answers, but let me hear people. Let me hear them talk. Praise the Lord. Okay, there are two people. Hold on. Pastor Blessing, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Number one, the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. Apart from that, the spirit of Jesus in you will bear witness. You know, there are certain things that when you hear with your ears or see, immediately the spirit living in you will communicate to you. You will know. You, this is not right. There is always that uh, evidence of the Spirit speaking to you. You will know immediately if you are closer to God and you are, you, you, you are used to hearing God, you will definitely know. They have fruit and then the Spirit will always tell you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, along that same line, first I was going to say that, you know, the Bible talks about the Berean Christians. So one is to be grounded in the word of God, like you alluded earlier. But apart from that, then it comes to what Pastor Blessing just said. It says that, uh, the Bible says that the spirit of God will reveal to you all truth. All truth. So when that thing happens, I've had experiences, not once, not twice, when I've had encounters with some so-called ministers of God. And then along the line, they start asking you to do one or two things. And immediately, I lose my peace. Once I lose my peace, I know it's the Holy Spirit telling me that, look, there was a time the Holy Spirit was like, this person that you're going to pray for you, can't you pray to God yourself? And I stopped talking to the person, right? And I went back to God and said, God, I'm sorry. Yes, you are my father. I can talk to you directly. And I started praying to God. So if you have that spirit of God in you, we all have different ways the Holy Spirit speaks to us. So once you are in doubt, go back to the word of God. And before you do that, pray that the Holy Spirit will actually reveal the truth to you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, one more than a word. Praise the Lord. Just in line with what she just said, I think it was just yesterday night I saw something that a medical doctor was talking about uh, a child of God that was sick and he prescribed medication for that person. The person went to the pastor and the pastor said, no, just take this anointing oil. Unfortunately for her, the pastor is even seeing the doctor as well and he is taking the medication. But he told the person not to take the medication. So we need to be very careful. And she became so worse than even more than where she was before. And that pastor is getting better. So we need to be very careful of the things we hear or the things we do. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, let me... Because of... Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Praise God. 
just want to add to what Pastor Blessing said. Add, add to your volume. Praise Please. God. I want to add to what Pastor Blessing said concerning knowing the fruit. Sometimes we know the truth, but we just don't want to eat because of our own selfish interest. I had um, this friend who was in a church, and he told me, he said he knew that what the pastor was doing was not in line with God's word. But because the church gave him his job, the church has helped so many people. So he didn't want to leave the church. He knew the truth, but he didn't want to leave because of his own selfish interest. And this was because it's not like he didn't have a relationship with God, but I'm sure he didn't really know God one-on-one. -on -one. And this person happened to be an usher in the church. So he told me, he said, what, whenever he's in church, he will not stay at the doorpost in case the Spirit of God comes into the church to attack. So he usually stay in one corner of the church. So it's not like he didn't know that. So that was what he said. It's not like he didn't know. He knew, but because of his gain, he did not want to leave the church. And to add to also knowing them by their fruit. You know, sometimes when you believe God for something, you go, I had a neighbor who told me one time, like, okay, let's go to this ministry. It's a prayer ministry, interdominational. Myself and my husband followed them. We went. We actually didn't pray because we were just spirits. So when we got there, and God just helped us, although my husband was not so sensitive. And there was one of the fellowship days. I went to Loma. I was not there with my neighbor. I was surprised the pastor called me and said, if I had known him before now, he would not have allowed me to marry my husband. <laughs> I was shocked. And my husband was helping him to do, he wanted to establish a church. So my husband was helping him to do name search and also to help him register the church. So when I saw the way my husband was even committed, I stopped attending the fellowship. So I had to call my husband and I told him, look at what this man told me. He was shocked. And I just want to thank God because God actually delivered us from that fellowship. So we stopped going to that fellowship. Truly, if you have a relationship with God and you are in the wrong place, you will know. And um, God will always give you that revelation. Praise God. Okay, let me, let me say something. If I bring a fake, a real dollar, and a fake dollar, now, uh, I don't have one. Just a disclaimer. I'm using it, I'm using it as an example. I don't carry fake dollar, I don't have one. So, if, I, if one brings a fake dollar and a real dollar and they look alike, are you likely to tell the difference? Eh? Have you been to some shops where you give them cash and they have to run it through a machine? Why do they do that? Because if you put the two dollar to the two types together, looking at it with the ordinary eye, you may not be able to tell. I mean, real fake. I'm not talking of the one they do that. We have some things around. Real fake. You may not be able to tell. So they run it through some funny device. Why? Because that device will tell them if it is fake or, or not. You need the Spirit of God to tell you who is real and who is fake. The problem is that we have not developed that relationship with God. And most of the time, when God is saying to us, red flag, we still continue. Why? Because of our own interests. It's just like you are driving. And the light is giving you amber, prepare to stop. You say, no, I will speed and go. Yeah, you can speed and go. You keep speeding, keep speeding. One day, I won't, I won't say the rest. But it's just like that. If you don't develop that relationship, the Spirit of God needs to guide you. Some of them, you don't, you, ordinarily you just know. And that is because maybe you have been brought up or you have been trained by God over time. Because I still sit down sometimes and I ask myself, when I see a pastor take Coca-Cola or Fanta, 
use it to anoint the people, drink some, give it to them to drink, that once he drinks it and they drink out of it, they've received the solution to their problems. And people are fighting to get on the line so that the pastor can drink, put some saliva inside, and return the rest for them to drink. So, do you think that is normal? But for some people, do you know that you can never bring them out of that place? But there are some that everything will look alike. We look so close that if not, if God doesn't tell you this thing is fake, you will know that it's fake. And that is what is happening in our days. Mind you, some of these people started well. But because of the way they, they, what they want to gain, they have deviated. I mean, a very simple example. And people, some people love this. If somebody comes to tell me that, not me, he won't tell me because I won't listen to him anyway. <laughs> somebody says you can commit masturbation, you can do this, do that, and he says to his congregation, and this is real life anyway, those things you do don't matter because you are sinning against your body, not against God. I mean, this is real life. And some people are happy in that place because that's what they do. Or they don't see anything if you divorce your wife. Right? There's no problem in that. And people are happy because they are in that atmosphere. Some of them, you just know that it is wrong. And some of these people will preach, I won't say excellent sermon, good sermon, good sermon, with good English to back it up. And then people will just be confused inside. And they fall for it. A lot of our young ones today, I went somewhere, some children say we are not attending the same church with our parents. They want to go somewhere because it is happening in that other side. Now there is already confusion. Because that other side, we don't know what the man is sowing into them. So therefore, when the children come back, if the parents have the audacity or the mind to find out what they learned, that would be great. If not, they may just be going ahead with different things. Praise the name of Allah. All right. Next few verses, 10 to 15. Question. Are there questions? So what is the takeaway? What is the takeaway? Yes. Okay. okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, um, I just, based on what, um, I don't remember, we'll, we'll, we'll say something about it on this row, but talked about, um, I just want to like talk about verses 5 to 10. He mm -hmm. um, mentioned something about, I think it was some kind of charges against Paul. Mm -hmm. Like people were accusing him of some yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's what is happening. And you, the last question you asked was, what would we say about the boasting of Paul? I think it was necessary because he talked about not collecting money, preaching the gospel for free, because I think the office of an apostle, like people gave them things and he wasn't accepting them. So people were trying to like say, um, is it because you know you're not a true apostle? That's why you're not collecting them. So I was now telling them, I, I get from other places too, but I'm just trying to help the ministry right here. So I think it's still in line with that. He was not trying to tell them, I know who I am, and that is where the boasting comes in. Don't think, I don't know I'm a true apostle, and that is what is making me not collect things from me. I'm a true apostle, then I had to like 
really prove to them that I'm, a, I'm like a true apostle as well. So that is where the boasting comes in. And I think it was actually necessary in that context to let them know um, I know who I am, kind of. Okay, thank you. I don't think we actually answered that question, even though I asked the question. Thank you for answering the question. All right. Okay, go <laughs> ahead, because I was going to say something which he, point, he okay, brought. Maybe, maybe. No, so go ahead, go ahead. I will add it together. So, Pastor, I want to read verse 8 to 9. I, I woke up this morning very unhappy. Very unhappy because somebody that we all know, very popular. In fact, I, I like the word Pastor Paul, Paul used there. Super apostle who said, There are many things Paul said in the Bible that is wrong. If I mention the name, you will enter. Them. There's another one. There, if I mention the name, I'm serious. Super apostle. And there's another one that said, If you want God to bless you and prolong your life, so 1,000 for every year you've, you've lived. You want to measure the number of people coming out? These are, in quotes, Pentecostal pastors. So, I, I dare say, sir, it, it, it's, not even, it's, it's not even that we think people that are teaching wrong things. There are really people that, that started well. Right? And that's why the point you made is valid here. Brapos said, even when, let me read verse 8 and 9, sir, if you don't mind, in New Living Translation. And he says, I robbed other churches by accepting their contributions so I could serve you at no cost. And when I was with you, I didn't have enough to live on. I did not become a financial burden to anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia brought me all I needed. The other point is, you know, because we all love money. And they know that we love money. And they have elevated what Jesus said, I will add on to you. In Matthew 6, 33, he says, seek first, Abi. The most important one. He said, then I will add. But so the brother, I will add to the front. Because that is the catch for us. If somebody says here, yeah, we are bringing, a, if pastor bring a super, a super apostle here now one day, and the man said, once you attend church, by showing up, I, by next tomorrow will be a billionaire. This whole place will be filled up, will be looking for chairs on the road. We have turned the gospel to pool. It's not a pool. It's, I don't know the right word. The word in my mind is Yoruba. But I will... Lottery. So, you saw 1,000, you get 100,000. This was a man... You read the story of this chapter 11. Paul was in that need. There are days he went without eating. And he waited until Silas came from Macedonia. They gave him money. The church he was talking to was not giving him anything. And he wasn't asking them. Because he saw them. That if he asked them, it will work against him. So he prefer to be hungry. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. He said, uh, what's your name? Sir? Huh? Jephthah. Jephthah. Okay. Jephthah said something, which uh, part of what I wanted us to discuss. One, you see, sometimes we, people destroy other people because of what they want to project. And it happens. Even pastors. So this other said, well, who is Paul? Who is this? They were trying to run him down. So that they can do what? Rise up. So you don't need to do that. That's another takeaway. You don't need to. Do I walked in a place. Oh my God. Very poisonous place. Thank God my boss loved me. Every other people person in that place. You will just see how this one we destroy this one. This one we destroy this one. Even among their wives. They knew what was happening. Even one wife boasted to the other and said, wait and see what will happen to my husband. How he's going to rise very soon. Because they will, and the man was just, he sometimes he will come into my office. And say, Emmanuel, why are you people like this? <laughs> he was asking me because those people will go and do everything. It wasn't our color, if I'll put it that way. It was an expatriate. But we come to my office and ask me the question. Me, 
At first, I didn't understand why he was asking me. So why are you people like this? It was later I realized that he himself was getting confused with one person coming in, destroy the other person because of promotion. You don't need that. You don't need it. Don't destroy anybody. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Uh, I think I'm supposed, not I think I'm supposed to do the review. So let me take part of that time. Let's go to the next five verses. So we talk, so before we read, take away from these five, five verses. Number one. Yes. Another takeaway. You don't need to run down people. Okay, I think that was the first five. Okay, but it's okay. Okay. And then uh, he talked about boasting. Now, which Paul later mentioned down also. His boasting was not about what he, I mean, how he has arrived. But it was more about the sufferings. The things he went for. And today, the general verse I talked about comfort in the open heavens. Today, everything we do is about comfort. I remember in those days when we go for retreat. In these days, if we tell people come for retreat, in fact, and they say go to one camp where you sleep on double bunk, they won't show up. You know, it's only in this place we go for retreat, we go to hotel. Five star, three star. This country too has its problem. The last retreat I went to before I came, I slept on mat. Now, I'm not saying you must suffer because you want to hear the gospel. But like the other I said, if comfort, if because of comfort you won't hear the truth, then you will miss it. Comfort is good. It's good for this place to be nice so that when we sit down, we are comfortable. But don't let the comfort make you forget what you are supposed to hear. If sleeping on the ground will make me pay attention because I can't sleep where, I better sleep on the ground. Because if I will sleep on the bed and I will just sleep off and I won't hear, then I better don't sleep on the bed. You know that's why some people, when they want to pray, they don't sit down. They don't lie down. They get up. The tendency of lying down is that in the mood of prayer, they would have traveled. All right. Verse 11. Why? Because I don't love you, God knows that I do. But I will continue doing what I have always done. This will undercut those who are looking for an opportunity to boast that their work is just like ours. These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I'm not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that these servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. Praise the Lord. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. Now, you know, sometimes we look, let's bring it home. Because even in the church, you will have people who are not Christians but pretend to be Christians. They disguise. So even in the church, we God help us to discern very well. All right. Let's discuss quickly. What do we have to say? Verses 10 to 15. 11 to 15, sorry. What can you take up or take out from there? Paul said something. He said, I will not stop to do what I'm supposed to be doing because people are saying things. When you get to the point where you say, I'm not doing a game because uh, you check yourself. No matter what people are saying, look, this thing I've been called to do, I will do it. May I say to us that there are some of us that if we didn't listen to God, what people said, some of us would have packed our Bible. We are not doing it again. After all, 
I'm not the only one serving God. Let other people go and continue. I think we went <laughs> we went somewhere. Maybe I shouldn't say it. We went somewhere. It was later ahead. I didn't hear. Somebody came to greet me. A pastor. And he greeted me very well. Meanwhile, I had directed people to, his, to go and fellowship with him. I said, some people go there. He went to the table where he was. And he started talking some things. And then there were people on that table that seemed to know the history of certain things. So they decided to be... When they started with him, he just kept quiet. Now, there are people that will tell you to your face. There are people that will go back and destroy you. Some will tell you openly, face to face. Paul said, anything you people want to do, do it. Say what you want to say. This work, I've been committed to, to doing it, and I will do it. Don't let anybody tell you or push you out to do from doing what you are supposed to do. You are not better at it. God will give you. When he calls you, he will equip you. You didn't sing where today, you will sing where tomorrow. You didn't teach where today, you will teach where tomorrow. But don't let people, don't let this, don't let the statement of people stop you from what you are supposed to do. Do you know there are people who have left their jobs because of what people did to them. Now, they wouldn't have left if they were talking about Jesus Christ. They say, ah, these people, they will keep quiet and just, but when it was, when it came to their personal life, they said, I can't stay here anymore. They left. But when it was about Jesus, they didn't leave. Don't let anybody push you or make you to stop serving the Lord. Praise the name of Allah. We will continue where we stop today. We'll take our offering and then we'll pray. Praise the Lord. All right, let's pray for our offering. Let's pray for our pastor. Can you just point our hands towards him and just pray that... The word of God will never be scarce in his mouth. I pray that the ministry of the word will continue to prosper in his life. I pray for the church too, that will have receptive heart to hear and do the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, so let's pray for the seed of the offering we want to give this evening. Let's pray that the Lord will give us a generous spirit, especially with respect to finances, that the Lord will give us a generous spirit. He said, he that give bountifully, we receive bountifully. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. In Jesus' name, we pray. And so, Father, we thank you for the time out with you this evening. We ask, oh God, that everything we have heard and many more that you will say to our hearts, you give us grace to do them in Jesus' name. And Lord, we commit the seed we are giving this evening to your hands, oh God. We pray, Lord, you continue to give us a generous spirit that will be able to dispense out of that which you give unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. On the mountain, in the valley, and on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah. The, the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion. The land of the living, the Lord is good forever. The Lord, the Lord is my portion in the land, in the land of, the of the living. living. The Lord is good yes, it's all forevermore. forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living, living. the Lord is good forevermore. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus, 
Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, you're a wonderful God. I love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, you're a wonderful God. Darling Jesus. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, you're a wonderful God. Oh my darling Jesus, you're a wonderful God. I love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, you're a wonderful Lord, darling Jesus. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus. Hey, oh my darling Jesus, you're a wonderful you are Lord. You're a wonderful Lord. I love you so, I love you much, so much, darling Jesus. Hey, you are a wonderful Lord. Tell me, who is greater than Jehovah, Lord, divine Lord? There is no greater than Jehovah, Lord, divine. Who is greater than Jehovah, Lord, divine? There is no greater than Jehovah, Lord, divine. Yes, excellent. Excellent Jehovah, marvelous Jehovah. There is no greater than Jehovah, Lord, divine. Jehovah, there is no one greater than Jehovah, Lord Praise the name of the Lord. Just to point out before we pray that sometimes people make mistakes, right? But when it becomes a trend, then be careful. But what you know, when a man makes mistake and he realizes he has made a mistake, and he comes back to correct it. That is good. But when he makes a mistake and he refuses to correct it, even when people tell him, that's a problem. Now, because we have social media, that's why I always say that when a mistake is made in church, I won't call it mistake. When, okay, let's say mistake. When something is not right, it is better to correct it when all the people are there. You know why? By the time you come back to correct it, some people who heard may not be there. And they may have built their stuff based on what they heard. So, what you now need to do is to repeat it a couple of times. So, the man who missed last, ne <clears throat> who missed last week, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. So that at least you will cover a lot of the people. But that's not what we are talking about. Because these days, what we talked about are people who deliberately are on the wrong path. Like we said, some may have started well. I don't even know what got into their heads. That they went in the wrong direction. And like Pastor Leko said, these days, it's all about money. They don't even talk about local currencies anymore. Especially those of them from your place. There is a pastor who said, and we have some people who are so, they have, and I don't blame the mission for coming up with a, a new rule. Nobody gets on the altar to preach without certain things being done. We had some people now after dollars. A, a person has, I mean, left his ministry over where he is now. He's just from one place, just everywhere now, money. Can preach and collect 10,000. Talking of US dollars, so I'm not talking of Canadian dollars. 5,000. And then they are boasting. And we too, we are feeding them. Feed them very well. God will deliver us. Father in heaven, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we pray that you will help us. That every one of us will not fall into error. That we will grow more to know you. That when we see 
and we hear these things, we know that they are not right. Open our eyes of understanding. Teach us, Lord, to know what is right. And help us not to fall into the wrong group. No matter how good the English may be, no matter how good the presentation may be, but help us to go for substance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. Help us to grow in you on a daily basis. Help us never to fail. Help us not to fall. Please, my Father, keep us standing to the very end. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor.